What's going on guys, Jake here. Today I have another little mix video for you, a little mix technique that I've been thinking about. Uh, if you haven't seen my last one, uh, I'd highly recommend it. It's about filters and kind of customizing them. I'll put a, a card in the top right hand corner for you if you're interested in that. Um, but today I wanna talk about a, a different way to use compression that I've been thinking about. I'm sure I'm not the first to think about this way, but uh, definitely something that's interesting and hopefully will be helpful to you in your mixes. So if you like this video, definitely hit that thumbs up button. If you don't hit that dislike button and tell me why, I would love to learn from your, your guys' experiences and kind of foster a, a learning community more or less. Um, and if you're interested, definitely subscribe because we got more music production videos on the way. But anyways, let's talk about this way to use compression. Um, I have a couple notes here that I just wanna kind of walk you through my thought process of this. Um, so the biggest thing is that there's kind of, for in terms of this video, I wanna break it down into two sections. You obviously have your elements, which is like your instruments, your guitars, your bass, so on and so forth. And then you have your processing, um, your compression, EQ, all of that. So what, when we usually use compression, you automatically kind of think about adding compression to your elements so that you can either do a number of things, you know, tame transients, enhance transients, do the same thing for the sustain of the element. Um, you can reduce all of the dynamic range or even just Bring up the vol, bring up the overall level of that element, even though that's kind of controversial. Um, but loudness wars and all that stuff. But we won't get into that. Uh, so my thing that I wanted to show you guys is kind of using compression on more of the processing side to bring out certain aspects of a processor more, because you have the attack and release control. You can really kind of control what part of the processing is being increased. And that's the thing is we're gonna actually be using this upwards compression or this rise, raising of the level type of compression that's kind of controversial, but we're gonna be using that on the processing side to bring out certain parts of the processor. And in this particular video, we're gonna be using it on delay, ch uh, delay channels. Uh, the reason I did this I think this is a good example is because I recorded this in this room that you see here. So I wanted to add delay to kind of give it a false room, kind of give it some space, so on and so forth. Um, I have a acoustic guitar and an electric guitar track. And, excuse me, um, one was through the DI, the electric guitar is through the DI, uh, and uh, the acoustic was obviously just recorded in the room. So generally speaking, it's kind of hard to blend them together to make them sound like they're both coming from the same space. So that's what I was trying to aim to do with this delay. And as you can see, I have, let's see, um, the same decay time on both. Well, this one's 53.9, generally speaking. Um, but the problem that I was running into was that 53.4 was not really enough to blend them together. And if I was to go ahead and to double that to 106.8, uh, then it was too much. So I was kind of, I needed to find a good balance between this. And I, you know, I don't really wanna be using, like bringing it up halfway in between because then the delay starts to sound weird and it may not fit great in the mix. So I needed to figure out some way to bring up the delay without actually increasing the decay time. And that's where the compression comes in. Now, my trick with the compression for just the processing in particular is to go really aggressive and make sure that we are only affecting the sustain because we don't want to affect the transient of the, decay, of the delay but we wanna affect the sustain and we wanna bring that up, hence using the upward compression is I guess is what we're gonna be calling it. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at our compressor. As you can see, we have minus 31.5 dB on the threshold. We have six dB, uh, six is our ratio, six to one. And then we have a slow attack, so it's not affecting the transients, as you can see. 
and a slow release, so it's affecting the sustain. And then here's the here's the kicker: is that we have almost seven dB of makeup gain, so that we're bringing up all of the the, the decay and all of the delay time, so that where it's more audible. So I kind of want to just really quickly show you what this sounds like. Um, that's really it. I just wanted to make sure make sure that you guys understand the process and my thought process behind this. Um, so first of all, I'm going to solo out our electric guitar and our delay channel for our electric guitar. We're going to take a quick listen. So without delay, this is just the straight guitar channel. That's the straight guitar channel. Sorry, I had that solo in place. So that's with it. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty mellow, and it's, it helps a little bit, but not a whole lot. And you see, if I was to bring this up to 106, it starts to get a little bit messy. There's too much going on in the sustain, so I didn't really like having that. And that's where my where I ran into my problem is like, hey, how am I going to fix this? So I have 53.4 milliseconds, and I have the same over here with the acoustic guitar, which I will add in. So that's without delay, both of them. Starting to sound like they're in the same room, but still not quite, and it's just not enough delay, in my opinion. So now we're going to add this uh, aggressive compressor that's only affecting the delay channels. Both are the same, I just option click and drag. You hear the difference? It like warms it up a bit and it brings up the sustain of the delay. So that was my thought process on that. I think it helped a lot. Something that, the reason why I thought of this is because I do this a lot with the snare drum. If I have a snare track uh, and I add a specific reverb, obviously delay is not the only time that you're gonna be using this. Reverb's another really great way to use it. it bring up the sustain of a reverb and that actually might be a bit more smooth and it might be easier to set the right compression settings. So that's how I thought about it. Uh, so like, once again, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Tell me why, tell me if you uh, didn't like it and why you wouldn't use this or why it might be harmful. I would love to hear your opinion on it. And uh, until next time, everyone, have a good day.